Now 80, Bridget Riley has been making these astonishing wall drawings since the late 1990s, and they've been shown as far apart as Switzerland and New York and London. And this is the latest and largest. And looking at it, I can't work out the system of the drawing at all, although it, there must be one, and it's all been worked up from little drawings that she makes herself in her studio. Even though I try and count or walk along the drawing, look up at it from an angle, I can't quite see what the system is, and my eye won't settle when I look at it. It keeps being dragged across the surface. Little rhythms start to intrude and flicker at the edge of your sight. When she was a young artist, Bridget Riley was very much impressed by a show of Jackson Pollock's that was in London. And though you can't see any relationship in the sense of how her work's made, and Pollock's, with his flails of paint and so on, there is this sense of something filling your visual field and sucking you into it. And one is dragged mentally into this space that seems to have no up, no down, no left, and no right. It seems to envelop you as if one were consumed by bubbles of light. In the 1960s, Bridget Riley was known as a, an op artist for those very sort of optically disturbing paintings in black and white that she did and which became really part of the swinging 60s in a way. And she moved on into colour, really rich, effulgent, zinging colour that, that seemed to ache and, and fight itself across the canvases, then into wall drawings. And what she's done really is to return to what she was doing in the 60s, but in a way in which it somehow catapults it into a new world altogether. Of course, the, the technical problems of making a work like this are enormous, and I think it took about a week, a week to actually execute, but a great deal longer than that to work out exactly how to get the wall prepared correctly, to get the paint to the right viscosity so it sits in the surface rather than just on top of it or under it, so it maintains its blackness all the way through, so there are no falterings, no accidents, no mistakes. So it becomes itself rather than the product of handiwork. And as you're looking, you may for a moment worry about, gosh, how did they do that? But the work itself takes over and you don't care about that really because the important thing is being here. It's not just meant to be seen from afar. Getting up close is also incredibly rewarding. And the way in which one looks at it from a steep angle when you are near the wall, you start to get these lovely serpentine cursive rhythms moving through the drawing. One of the things that really happens in her work is that you don't really just look at it, you watch it. And one of the things you're watching is your own perceptions at work, the way your mind is sucked in and dragged around and the way in which where the black lines cross each other there are these little pings of light that are really just perceptual and are happening in the cones and rods of your eyes and not exactly on the wall itself at all and you become super aware of the act of looking and for me that's something completely magical what it is really is is really the summation, I think, of this long career full of curiosity and interest in the world about her. And it seems to me, really, that this is as good as it gets. And this really is an artist whose late work somehow goes beyond everything she's done before. She's kind of um, pushed the work into a new realm altogether. <laughs>